Hi, you're on the Dixie Bell Well the Chalk um, Paint 101 page. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Annette and I am the owner of Camden Street Designs, which is, I have a booth that's located at James Southworth and Company's um, built, um, business, I'm sorry, at 1870 Meadow, Brook, Meadow Creek Road, Gladstone, Virginia. So if you are local, that would be, um, I'm a Dixie Bell Prime, a premier retailer, and that's where it's lo my business is located. Um, I have also attached some information above my head where you can find your local retailer through the Dixie Bell site. And also I have a, a affiliate link up there as well. So when you hop on, um, just let me know where you are watching from and what you're up to today. I'm going to try to see um, the comments and everything, but I'm here by myself, so I apologize now in case you hear my dogs barking outside or anything. If you can't hear me, um, let me know. I'm trying to use this microphone today, and it's the first time I've used it, so I'm not sure if it really works or not. So anyway, let me know. So today we're going to go over um, some glaze, um, some grunge glaze. Let me just kind of refresh. Let me see if I can find comments here. I'm not really sure. If I don't see comments, um, hey, Amanda from Georgia. Is it hot down there? It's hot and humid here too in Virginia. So I know it's, I used to live in Mississippi. So I know the further south you get, the more humid it gets and the heat is, you know, pretty bad too. Um, but let me, um, if I don't see comments and I can't answer, I will go back after the live and answer comments and questions. Um, then so what we I'm going to, just going to recap what we did to this coffee table um, we are hey Rebecca I got this table and I guess it was I guess it's MDF with some type of hey Norma um, hey it's nice in Ohio yeah a little bit I guess the humid is, humidity is not quite as bad maybe but anyway getting back to the table it was um, just I I guess kind of an orangey kind of finish that you know that was real popular back once upon a time and um, I went in and I painted it uh, first I cleaned it with uh, white lightning I don't know if any of you are using the Dixie Bell paint now but white lightning is the first thing you really need to do to clean and prep your your um, furniture you just mix it in some warm water you can put it in a spray bottle or you can um, put it in a bucket. It's, I think it's two heaping tablespoons for a gallon or something like that. And then I wasn't sure about the factory finish and everything, whether I could you know, just go ahead and paint over it with the, the chalk paint um, or if I should go ahead and do the slick stick. I'm planning on flipping this. So the last thing I wanna do is have this go out and, and the paint like chip off or anything. I didn't wanna take that chance. So I cleaned it really good and then I used the slick stick and I apologize. I know my slick stick looks pretty bad right now, but I am the worst for cleaning my tops off and it gets all gooky and everything. So slick stick, two coats, and then I put a um, couple coats of the drop cloth on. Well, there's a long story on this. I first painted it vintage duck egg because I've been wanting to paint something vintage duck egg forever. And I decided to paint this vintage duck egg. Well, it just didn't look right. It, it just wasn't meant to be vintage duck egg. Um, but, so I went ahead and covered it with the drop cloth. After the drop cloth, I don't know if you can see, let me just tilt this down a little bit. I did an easy blend with the um, mud puddle and then I also, hey, Louisville, Kentucky. And then I also did sandbar and then blended it up and into the drop cloth. So after that, I went ahead and I wanted to do the top a little bit different. So the last live we did, I did the no pain gel stain and walnut. And that was that right there. So I am liking the way that turned out. So I asked the last time when we had live, should I do, I was going to do a glaze. I knew I was going to do a glaze. Um, you could do, a, use a glaze. You could use waxes. Uh, I just, I like both, but 
glaze goes faster for me and it's less elbow grease. So no, I'm kind of lazy that way. So I gave everybody a choice. I was going to go do either the Van Dyke Brown over the, um, the drop cloth or I was going to do the grunge. And the grunge is actually shown on the drop cloth. So everybody chose the grunge, which is really cool because I always lean toward the, um, the Van Dyke Brown. So it was good for me to get out of my comfort zone a little bit and try something new. So I am going to, we're going to use the, um, the grunge and go over it to get into some of those details. Um, Dixie Belle has nine shades of glazes and the glazes are really good to, um, you can do like, like into the, the details and sh accent the details. And um, I like the, the copper bronze. I think that's very pretty. I want to use that on something now because I like shiny. But uh, they, well, anyway, they have nine glazes. And once you put the glaze on, you don't have to seal over top of it. You can just, it, it would, you know, after it cures, it's hard. It's not going to go anywhere. The cure time is, I think, about 28 days, like everything else. Um, so uh, you can apply it with um, a good quality sponge brush. And then uh, for details, what I like to use is like a little artist brush to kind of get in there. I, I'm a messy painter. I don't know about y'all, but I get paint everywhere. And um, so I try to use a little bit on there and then lightly take it off. I'm heavy handed as well. So I have to, it really is a challenge for me to do something light. Um, so a lot of times when I glaze, I'll wipe it much, too much and then I have to go back and put it over, which is no problem. You can do that. Um, it's war based. So if you don't like, if it's too heavy and you need to take some of it off, you can go back with a wet damp, uh, damp cloth and, and take that off. Hey, Lisa. Um, you can, use glaze all over a piece of furniture and it will definitely change the look. It gives it an aged look, an antique look, um, or you can just do just the, um, just the crevices and the details. And that's what I'm planning on doing today. I have done it and, and changed the whole, like aged the whole entire thing and it looks really great. Uh, so it's just whatever matter what you're looking for, what, what you're looking to do. And like I said, you could use actually some of the, the waxes and do the same thing. And the waxes you, is also used as a sealer too. Um, before, after I got all this done, I did put a, a layer of the clear coat, top coat on it and satin. I just like doing that because it doesn't, it, keeps the paint from being so porous and soaking up so much of the glaze or a wax or whatever you decide to use. Um, so anyway, I did do that to prep it and I am just going to apply it. I'll probably, I might try every single one of these and see which one works the best. Like I, I have to admit, I did some of the legs yesterday so I could get some of it done because I got plans for later on. We're just going to do a little bit of this and then we got something else we're going to do. Um, so I, um, I did part of it and I can show you what it looks like after it's set overnight. The, the glaze, um, this is the grunge and it looks kind of a gray and it, it is kind of gray, but it does deepen and the black, the black um, glaze is actually blue in the container. Let me grab one. I think this is a blue. Yeah, I mean a black. So this is the black, but you can see it's blue and people get confused when they come in to buy it because they're like, well, this says black, but it looks blue. Well, after it dries, let's see, I don't think, I think this is a new one. I don't think I've used this one yet. No. After it dries, you can actually see where it's got, it's turned black there. So with the um, oxid oxidation, oxi I can't, whatever that word is, when it air dries, it gets darker. So anyway, so what we're going to do is go in and put some of this grunge on. And like I said, we're going to hit the um, details. All right. 
Hey, Benita, where are you watching from? I'm just going to put it in. It's very easy to do. You just get in there and put it where you want it. So has anybody got any projects going on today? Anything fun? Can you believe we're already here in July? And this is with the sponge brush. I'm just going to wipe it back lightly. And you can see how it's setting in the crevices. I don't know if you can see that very well. But see, like I said, I go in there and I wipe it too much. Just gotta lightly wipe it so it stays in. And as it dries, it does deepen. You can also take a chip brush and like cut it off, like give it like a flat top, and it makes it a little bit stiffer. And that way it goes in there and it's a little bit, you can get it more in the, the crevices. Has anybody used the glaze? And if so, which, what is your favorite one? Put a little bit more up there. dog barking out there. Alrighty. So just gonna wipe that off and just leave it in the crevices. You can also do um, a lot of this type of work with um, you know doing like a, a dry brushing technique which is really cool to do too. I have actually used dry brushing along with the glazes um, with you know something that has more detail and everything and I like that look a whole lot and they have the whitewash glazes also that you can use the pearlescent to give it like a little bit of a shimmer which is really pretty that dry and now we're going to work on this area right in here so we're going to bring it up a little bit closer I don't know if you can see it all right so now I'm going to use this like artist brush it's just a, a straight artist brush it's flat like a little bit of a stiff bristle because I want to get into these crevices and I really want to leave most of that in there So how many of you out there paint furniture for just yourselves as a hobby? Or how many people out there actually paint and flip furniture? There's a bunch of techniques that you can do um, with glaze give it more of a 
um, worn, aged look. So it just wipes right off like that. And I'm going to hit it in this area right here. If you have any questions, please post them for me. Let me see if I can find them. I can't find them on my computer. I don't know what in the world. I am a little technically challenged when it comes to this, that. So I need to have someone here with me to like read the questions and comments. It's kind of like chewing gum and walking or skipping or whatever at the same time. But you can see the difference that makes right there. All right, now we're going to move over to this leg right here. Just move that out a little bit. See, I just can't leave it alone. And that's the one thing you need to do is like, leave it alone, not, don't overwork it. It's just hard to do, hard to do. So I'm going to get in here, get these details. Has anybody taken vacation this year? We were supposed to be going to New York. I've always been to New York City like in the fall, like in the winter time or like, like, well, in the winter, it's always been cold. I think it was in March, but it was like first of March and it was freezing. And let's see, back in 2019, before all this stuff started with the pandemic, my husband and I, decided the last minute to go up to New York to at Thanksgiving to go see the Macy's Parade and I don't know if you've ever seen the Macy's Parade you will never forget it it is so awesome I mean I love New York City anyway I just get a charge I guess it's the ADHD in me I just get the endorphins the rush from being in the city because I live in the country in the middle of nowhere I have to drive an hour to get any place so um, anyway, we went to New York. It's always been the winter time or the fall, and it's always been cold. So we decided, well, let's go in the summertime. Um, actually, we had had a trip planned. We were gonna go on a cruise before, and then it got canceled because of COVID, and then res we rescheduled, and then that was supposed to be in July. We were gonna go to the Bahamas, not the Bahamas, Bermuda. And we were leaving from New York and well, the, of course that got canceled and then the ship was decommissioned. I mean, it's like, it was not meant for us to go on this cruise. So we were just going to go up to New York for, the, for a few days and see what it's like in the summertime. And then my husband started another, a new job so he wasn't able to take off. So that has been canceled. Of course, I mean, who goes, that's, is that really a vacation? I mean, it is kind of for me, but when you think of vacations, you think about beach and, or either mountains even, you know, but not New York City. Of course, I think I was probably gonna have to um, go to like a baseball game while I was up there. I think I would have had to do that. So anyway, that, plan has changed. So right now I don't have any plans for the summer. I've got some for the fall. All right, so I like applying it with this little brush because I feel like it gets more of where I want it to go. Um, so I am liking this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this part up and then I'll swing it around so you can see the other side there um, 
where I had pl applied it last night. And, um, oh, wrong way, let me see, sorry. All right, here we go. So you can see where I pl applied it last night. I actually applied it to the other side in the drawer and everything. And now the drawer, I did not put the um, satin finish on there. So I was a little worried that it was gonna grab too much, but it did very good. And uh, like I said, if you put too much on there and you need to take it off, you can always use a damp cloth, like I'm gonna have to do right there. And, um, or either baby wipes. Baby wipes work really, really good. They are like the best thing to use. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna wipe lightly off. And the cloth that I'm using is just the cloth that you get. It says it's like a t-shirt material. I bought it from like a Lowe's or somewhere like that. Um, you get a whole bag of them and they come like, like this size and they're lint free. But they're, I don't know if that was a, I guess it's not t-shirt material because it's like a, some kind of paper, but it's a, it's a thicker paper. It's not like a paper towel or anything, but I would not want to wear a t-shirt that felt like this. So, all right, so you can see that. And like I said, if you want to, I mean, you could change it to antique it and darken the whole leg um, and that would be fine. I don't want to do that because I did do some of the blending. And if you wanted to go in and do um, like some of the, uh, like the waxes or like even the Dixie dirt, um, you can do that kind of in the corner and everything also. And it, was, you know, it looks really cool to do that and give it kind of more of a worn look, an aged look. So I am just going to flip it around so you can see. Get all my parts moving here. I got this really cool ah, cart here on, from a friend of mine but eh, really it's nice. So you can see where I put the, the grunge glaze on there last night and that's how it dried overnight. So I could actually add a little bit more, give it more of a um, depth and everything if I wanted to. And I hadn't decided if I'm gonna do that or not. I probably won't, um, but I'm liking the way it looks right now. So um, anyway, that's that. And I will finish up the other half of it later on. But I um, got something I'm going to do. So I have been wanting the Scarlet Brush. And every time I went to get those things, they were always sold out. I never could get them. So I actually was able to get it. So I got my Scarlet Brush. <clears throat> And I got, like I said, I'm a premier retailer, so I don't have the silk brand because I'm not elite, but I got me a jar of the silk. And I'm like, man, I want to try the silk because I've never used the silk. I want to try the silk and I want to try my scarlet brush. And I was thinking, what can I paint? So I looked all around here to find out what I could paint. Yes. So what I, I am glad I got one too. I have not used it yet. Still in the packet, so that you're gonna see me use it for the first time. But um, anyway, so I wanted to use the silk paint and I looked around, try to find something that I could paint and I decided to paint that armoire back there in the back, if you can see that. Hello from Oklahoma. How you doing, Amber? So, is it hot out there? Hey, Sharon, glad you're here. Oh, and if you, for some reason, if you're watching later, please put like hashtag replay. Um, and if you could go up and follow my page over at Camden Street Design, that would be great too. But um, anyway, so I'm going to scoot this out the way. And who else paints in their sh like bare feet? It's like, I just like, as soon as I come home from work, I've taken my shoes off. And when I'm down here working in the basement, I'm taking my, I just have to take my shoes off. Because I just, see if I can get this thing to cooperate with me. 
There we go. Without hearing, hearing too much of a crash. All right, so let's scoop that out the way. I've got so much stuff here. All right, so now I'm going to try to scoot this up without turning everything over. So be patient with me. All right. Um, do you have a sand? Okay, so silk paint, what you have to do is, let me just scoot close. Um, it's just a scuff sand, which is not like sanding, sanding. I've got a dresser, a chest of drawers that I ended up, I thought I could just paint over top of it, but the paint is probably, I don't know, the paint probably has lead and everything else in it. So I was actually stripping that and having to sand it and everything. Um, so the paint with silk, no. You just don't have to do that. You just do a scuff sand. Actually, you clean it really good. Um, I use the white lightning, but now Silk has a, what is it called? Pristine Clean that's out that you can use with it, but white lightning works just as well. So what I did, and when I got this, this was actually free, and um, all we had to do is go pick it up. Easy, you think, but the thing is heavy. It's not solid wood. It's like MDF, which you know is hard, uh, heavier than that but the guy I got it from said his parents had it for like 30 years and so it was in his basement and we just I got a friend of mine and my husband and I we went and got that thing out the basement and carried it up and put it on the truck and then when my husband and I got it home it was like the two of us trying to unload it and that was oh my god it was an ordeal so anyway I'm like if I paint this thing I don't know who's going to move it because yeah easy right as you would think it's like oh yeah so i'm like man you're killing me you're killing me um so anyway i washed it i got i got a bucket of water with the white lightning and bless you too bless you for watching and um so anyway i washed it a couple times because i'm like it's 30 years i mean i know they've been putting like probably pledge or whatever on there and so I cleaned it and then I lightly scuff sanded it with the rad pads. I just used the, the fine. I mean, they have the, you know, medium fine, very fine, super fine. I just used the fine. And then I just went over with a uh, cloth and just um, wiped all the dust off really good and everything. So I'm hoping that will be sufficient. So anyway, get a sip of water. So I got my silk and they have 20 colors um and the colors are you know kind of uh they're not really bright like you know our chalk paint has the the oranges you know the florida orange and uh, flamingo and different things like that um, these are the hampton hampton inspired so they're kind of all like nautical and coastal um, looking but opening for the first time Ta-da! And they say to stir it really good. I've been shaking it, but they said to stir it. Let me just show this. Um, it is much thinner than our chalk paint, as you can see. So I've stirred it and I've shaken it. I've been shaking it and shaking it. So I think we're good to go on that. So it takes, it has no VOCs and it takes about two coats. This is where I think I'm gonna have a problem because like I said, I'm kind of heavy handed. Um, they say you go in with, you know, an, a nice even um, stroke and it um, is self leveling. So you don't have to worry about the brush marks so much and also use a synthetic brush. So, Anyway, let's see what else. Uh, da, 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 da. But now it is silk mineral paint. It is not silk chalk mineral paint. You don't use water with it like you would use our chalk paint, which I had to put my water bottle out of the way because it's so easy just to grab it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can slide y'all a little bit closer without tearing everything up. All right, so you can see that. 
All right, so when I went and I took the hardware off, I couldn't, this has got little nails in it. So I'm just going to paint over top of it. Now, normally you would use like slick stick if you're gonna paint over metal or glass or plastic or anything like that. Um, like this piece of furniture here, this actually is the bottom of the china cabinet back from the 70s and this is like plastic on there. So you definitely would use slick stick for that. Um, even though this has the built-in primer and top coat in one, you still have plastic glass, metal, laminate, Ikea furniture, that kind of stuff. Definitely slick stick. All right, so I'm gonna dip my brush and I'm just gonna. And you can definitely tell a difference and this opposed to the chalk paint. This is, um, see, I'm making a mess right here. This is white cap is what color this is. Hey, Patty. And I am liking my scarlet brush. It fits in my hand really good. It's good to get like the little details here. So you can see some of the brush strokes and you will see those for the first coat of paint. Um, I will wait. I the dry time on it, again, it depends on like the heat and the, um, with the temperature. If, it, if it's a little bit cooler or humid, it will take a little bit longer to dry. But um, I will always, I usually let it sit like overnight anyway, just because of my schedule. But it's very smooth. I like that. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with this Amra. Um, I don't know about you. I like a, I told you about the table. I was going to do vintage duck egg, and you know that is actually the first time I've ever planned on doing a finish, other than when I've like custom something for somebody. Um, when I custom something for somebody, that's okay. I can do that. But usually I just, I don't know what I'm gonna do with something until I actually start painting and I'll just grab a color. So I am honestly not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I probably will come in and use either some wax or some glaze, definitely because it's got so much of the detail. You got detail around the doors and detail at the top too, if you can see that. So it's got all that detail so that, you know, it would look awesome with some glaze or wax. So, and like I said, I'm gonna paint over this. I don't know if that's gonna be a mistake or not, but I figured I would do more damage to it by trying to take it out with those little nails. I figured I would probably bend it and that would just be bad. So we'll just do some type of creative finish on that with maybe some ooh, some of the patina bronze or copper even something like that would be cool so anyway we'll see that is later on we'll have to do that so you can blend um, with this, with the silk paint, I don't think it, honestly, I don't, I've never, I don't think it would blend as well as the, you know, the, the chalk paint because of the water, being able to use the water and they just, the chalk just runs, just blends together so well. So I don't think you, it's going to blend. I maybe have to try it and find out. I don't know. I'm sure I can get on and find out some of the brand ambassadors, maybe Melissa or somebody has done it. I'm sure probably they have or Tracy 
or Brandy. So if you've not checked any of them out, you need to check them out because they're awesome. And I'm not going to paint the inside, I don't think. I shouldn't say I'm not going to do it. It's like, never say never, right? But it's just so much of the wood and like under here, it's like the bottom is like has drawers and stuff too. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna paint any of that. I'm gonna leave that. So whatever I do, it will go with that. Hey Jane, so where are you watching from? See what else do I need to tell you about this stuff here? It has 20 colors. You don't put water. Use a dry brush, dry synthetic brush. It is uh, water based. You can use like the chalk paint with it. Um, like you paint it and if you wanted to put another color you can use the chalk paint with it um, that is fine you can't mix this paint and the chalk paint like together to make a new color that's a no-no can't do that so can't do that but you but it works well with the chalk paint and also the top coats like I said, this has um, the top coat in it, so you don't have to have a top coat. But if you wanted to add, and it has kind of a, a flat, I guess a kind of an eggshell finish to it. So if you wanted something with a little bit more satin or something like that, a little bit more shine, you could use a satin or the gloss or whatever on it, or the gator hide. And like I said, self-leveling. So, and it little bit goes a long way too, just like the the chalk paint. So if you haven't tried it, this would be awesome for. You can use it for outdoor furniture or um, if I was going to paint cabinets or something or um, like table and chairs that's gonna get like a lot of use or whatever honestly if I had had this when I started the table the coffee table I probably would have used this um, just because I wouldn't have had to well yeah I don't know just because I did apply a slick stick to that because I did have that slick finish to it so I don't know I may not have or I could have scuffed sand. I scuffed sanded. I scuffed sanded it and I would have used it. Yep, that's what I would have done. I'm really not one for like painting the hardware, so this, this is painful for me. But I think it would be the less of the two evils if I had taken it off. And you see, I'm not putting much on the brush, too, so. And I know I'm overworking it, so don't do this. Don't overwork it. Just strict, just let it go. Because it's going to put, take two coats anyway. But, you know, actually, you look at how dark this wood is and how well this one layer of paint is covering and that's pretty daggone good. Who else likes the sound of the paint on the brush just going? Is it just like it's just relaxing for me? I've only been painting furniture. Uh, I started painting when I was I mean, I painted furniture 
because I needed new furniture or I needed the furniture update or whatever. So I've done it and I would just use whatever I get at the, you know, at the hardware store or whatever. But um, last year when everything happened and everybody was, you know, we weren't doing anything. I mean, I did go out to work because the job I do, it never stopped and we just kept on going. And, um, but anyway, on the weekends, I definitely had time to do stuff because nothing else was going on. So I had an old buffet that belonged to my grandmother. And I said, well, I'm gonna paint that thing. And it was um, mahogany. And I just bought some paint from like Lowe's, like some chalk paint, I can't even remember. I, I don't know if it was a Rust-Oleum brand, I don't know what brand it was. <clears throat> And I painted it, and oh my gosh, bleed through? I never even heard of bleed through until then. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I thought, because my mom was a smoker, and it had been in her house for so many years and everything. I'm like, oh my gosh, is it smoke, you know? So I am, I'm like, this is not going to work. So I got online, and I found Dixie Bell, and I got some of the boss and use that and man that was that was the answer so once I found that and got some colors and I was hooked and I'm like I gotta get I gotta be a part of this you know Dixie Bell is awesome and um, I need to be a part of this thing so but anyway I think this is gonna take me a while to paint what do you think yep I think it's gonna take a while and I'm going to have to get my ladder out because I'm too short to reach. And like I said, I'm not going to paint the inside. Um, I'm going to have to do, figure out what I'm going to do with the doors, with the edges. I may just, because I know I've got some of it on there, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll just wipe it up, clean it up or something. I'll figure that out. something to neaten it up if I was if I thought about it I probably should have taped it but who else hates the tape I mean really who else taping is just I don't know taping is a pain in the butt but I have friends that oh that's you know they clean it and they tape it and they, you know that's like the whole I just I don't have patience for that. I just, it kills me to have to take something. So anyway, getting back to my painting of the buffet and everything, um, you know, that's how I found Dixie Bell, but that's also how I found painting is such a good stress reliever. You know, it's like, I don't know, it's just like, especially if you have a job that you really don't see it never ends it's like there's no cut off you know it's always it's always another fire to fight um so anyway this is like instant gratification you know i can come out here and paint change the look of something you know and take something old that somebody was just going to throw away even though it weighed a ton. And I don't know when I decide to sell it, who's gonna move it because I don't know if I'm up for it. So we will see. All right, let me see. Like I said, this is going to take a while. Um, I might go over onto my page and do a live in the next day or so. Um, hey Deb, how are you doing? Um, and work on it a little bit to get at least the first coat on. And then I will have another live here on the chalk paint page. I don't know, next week I think it is, next Sunday? I'm not sure. So if I can get it to a point where we can start playing with adding something else to it maybe we'll 
will, will attempt to add some of the chalk paint with it or something. So put in comments what kind of what colors you think would go with this. Like I said, I, I have no plans. I don't know what I'm going to do um, with it. We can use some transfers, maybe some from the, from the bells and whistles line. Um, that would be cool. But if you have not got the scarlet brush, you need to get the scarlet brush. It is awesome. I think this is going to be one of my favorites, or is my favorite. I do like the, the flat mini brush. I do like that. But this just, I like the width of it. I mean, you can go in, actually, you could dip like a couple of different colors on it and like get it like a boho look. That would look really good. So, but anyway, like I said, if you have any comments or questions, please, I will go back and look and see and answer them in the, in the, um, com uh, in the comments. And I apologize if I missed something that you've asked right away. because so I couldn't figure out how to do it on the computer. I'm going to have to work on that. And um, so I can barely, I can see it on the phone. Uh, Magnol, you know, the Magnolia would, would be good. That would be very pretty. Blues and greens are always, you know, I love blue. So, but yeah, that's something to think about. So anyway, I don't know if you are, um, if you've set your notifications for the Chalk Paint 101 page, but you can go in and set your notifications so when one of us are doing a live, you will be notified. And um, that way you won't miss anything. Because there's a lot of good people coming on here sharing. And um, I don't know if you've seen some of the posts that people have posted today. It's some really pretty, pretty things on there. So go check that out. And also, if you um, see anything you want to try, any of the, the uh, glazes or anything, or any of the silk paint, um, silk paint you'll find your local elite dealer, or you can go to the Dixie Bell page, or you can go to, hey, Patty, thanks for popping in. Um, you can go to the Dixie Bell page and you can hit the affiliate link or find your local retailer. And um, so anyway, um, let's see. I want to thank you for watching today taking time out on your Saturday and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon and do something fun and if you're paint something post it and go over to my page and like share it with me there because I'd love to like see what you're doing um, but anyway thanks for popping in and if I don't see you before check me out I think it's next Sunday the 18th I think we're one o'clock that day so uh, anyway, but I am so glad that you tuned in and give it a try. I'm liking the silk. I'm liking it a lot. I might have to go, I might have to bump myself up to an elite so I can get it. Um, but anyway, thanks for tuning in and um, share, share this video with uh, your friends and everything too. That always helps our, our um, viewership and everything. So we really appreciate everything and everybody and what you all do for us. So anyway, if you have any questions, any comments, please put them in there. And um, thank you, Amber. Yes, please follow me, please. Um, I've got a YouTube channel that I've just started. Don't look at it. <laughs> Don't look at it. So anyway, but it's, uh, it, this is fun. This is fun and this is the way I relax um, for my job. And you know what a job is, J-O-B just above broke. So anyway, I have to have some good time and something to look forward to in the age that I am now. I'm not clubbing or anything, so I'm coming down in the basement and I'm painting. But anyway, it's sad, but I'm happy. So anyway, thank you for watching and y'all take care and have a good evening. And let me see how I can finish this.